Okay. Joining me now, Clay Johnson, founder and CEO of the Department of Better Technology, a firm that designs and builds software for government. He was a presidential innovation fellow. He's been the person that I have been following most closely in analyzing the website. So, Clay, looking at the website today, hearing the administration's updates uh, yesterday, what's your sense of how far things have come, and what does it tell us about how bad things were? Well, uh, it's a great deal of relief to me that uh, the website seems to be up and operational. I tried it out earlier. I'm on the individual market as a small business owner, uh, and uh, so I got a shop for my own health insurance, so I got a, a bit of the way through today. Um, I'm just glad that this preposterous debate that uh, uh, the Affordable Care Act should be judged by uh, healthcare.gov. I mean, healthcare.gov's problems was an acquisition and procurement problem, not a healthcare policy problem. It's not like when we, um, when we had butterfly ballot problems in Florida, we decided to revert to monarchy. Uh, <laughs> and <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, we shouldn't, you know, sort of judge the judge a healthcare policy based on, you know, uh, what a, what a website does. Uh, but for the most part, I'm happy with where things are now. Well, here's what's interesting to me: when, when when the website the first day there was all this attention paid to it, and the website was down, and it was very hard from outside the black box to get a sense like, is this really is this website really broken, or is this being hyped unnecessarily and one of the things I found interesting about reading through the, the what the administration is saying is oh yeah it really really was broken here's a sense bar graph showing system stability for the website it's now consistently surpassing 90 percent which we should note is far below what most commercial right. sites have they're around 99 percent at the lowest but it was at 42 percent at the beginning of November right. they have really 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 turned this thing around yeah, I mean, they put uh, a, a lot of great people on top of it, people like Greg Gershman, who is a presidential innovation fellow with me, uh, a lot of folks from Google. They did a great job in really taking this, thing, taking this thing and turning the boat around. The interesting thing, though, is that why weren't those people there from the get-go? I right. mean, we spent $600 million and put hundreds of bodies on this thing, and then we were able to basically scrap the site and rebuild it from scratch in a matter of two months. Why didn't we just do that from the start? That is a really good question. What is the answer to that question? <laughs> I think it's about procurement. I think it's about the way that government hires uh, contractors is inherently broken. Uh, and the only way that we can really get talent in is if it's basically 100% of the focus of the executive branch and the, and the president of the United States. That's the only way that we manage to, to get talent in, to, technical talent in, to do this. And so, and so for you, what's the big lesson learned from the healthcare.gov launch chapter of this of this story not from a policy perspective from a from a government tech perspective which is something that is going to be increasingly central and vital to what governments do well you know i think the lesson learned is that it's time for us to really fix procurement and the way that government delivers technology to the public. You know, government doesn't scale unless it adopts new technology. We wouldn't be able to elect people or talk with people if we, you know, didn't adopt uh, television and radio as uh, mediums. And it's time for us to really take a look at technology and say, look, this technology thing isn't going away. It's not a fad. Uh, and we need to really incorporate it and internalize it into, uh, into the government. We need a digital first strategy, uh, which means the government's got to get really good at hiring contracts contractors and hiring talent on the inside to implement this are there going to be are there going to be repercussions obviously there have been a, a repercussions for the Obama administration you just look at their polling numbers and their approval there are massive political repercussions you think there'll be repercussions for CGI for example which is the chief contractor on this project sadly no I don't think there will be you know the federal government isn't very good at managing accountability with its contractors and generally when you have a marketplace that's as dysfunctional as the procurement marketplace I wouldn't be surprised if CGI federal continues to win contracts I wouldn't hire them to build my website but unfortunately I think the uh, the way that the procurement system works now CGI can do things like sue itself into winning the contract when the federal government has to select say the lowest bidder and CGI is that lowest bidder then they'll win the bid. Right. Well, the, the, this will be an interesting story to follow in the future as this plays out. Clay Johnson from the Department of Better Technology.